What's up guys, Rich Deerman Hunter here. Been looking forward to this for a long time. It's morel season here in Ohio and we are going to the only spot that I know of that produces every year that I've morel hunted. And uh, it's been raining a lot, it's been pretty mild weather, so I'm hoping that we have a really good uh, day today. It, it slowed down there a little bit last year, um, but the weather was kind of bad. So we're gonna spend the entire day there today. We brought some snacks, we brought some water, got everything we need and uh, hopefully we're gonna have a really good day today we are so excited it is me uh, you'll see Brandon later in the video and of course Allison um, the urban huntress over here on the camera so uh, come on with us and hopefully you can learn something along the way we'll see you in the woods Okay, Allison, first mushroom of the day. I think that's peak, per personally. Peak? Yeah, that's perfect. That's mm. perfect. Good job, first mushroom of the day. <laughs> She's got the hot streak going here. Got another one. That is a live ash tree. Do you have the thermometer with you? What do we got here? Went down a little bit. Looking at a couple dead trees here. I don't even know what these are because the bark's all gone. Oh, look that's at that. Yeah, that's, that's, a, a that's as big one. as they get. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yep. Nice. This is an old tree. I actually, I think it's an old ash, but it's hard to tell for sure. There's probably a couple around here that we can't see. Oh, yeah, that's like your other one. I see another one. It was right there. He's like still in the ground. Got two on this tree. Got two on this tree at least. Let's check under some of this bark. Remember when I tried to pawn you off onto this tree? They are big, wow. Prime time. Did you lift this bark up yet? Oh my good, oh there's another one right under that bark. Yep, all right Allison, crack the bag open. <laughs> Here you go. Wow, that was thickly connected to the mycelium. Oh, there's a huge slug on this one. We've been coming a week early. Yeah. Nice it's job. So Those are nice. That's prime time. Caught them at the peak. I haven't looked around me very much. Yeah, there's one right. You see that one? Yeah. Okay. There's one to your right too. A little farther up, right here. Oh yeah, right there. Yep, that's about the same freaking spot. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Honestly, yeah. Honestly, is. That's funny. Anything under the bark? There we go. How many did you end up with? Three. Nice. Very cool. There's one. Yeah, they're not past their prime or nothing. Yeah, it was just kind of... It's a good mushroom. Ash tree. Yep, right there. Don't ask me how I saw it. Oh, jeez. It 
What's up guys, just got back to the urban HQ here uh, with the gang. We walked about 12,000 steps a piece, about five to six miles, and it took us probably, I don't know, five hours or so to do that. Ended up with 62 mushrooms, probably the best day we've ever had, um, if not numbers wise, definitely weight wise. But it was an incredible day today. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something in the video. We're gonna get these on the stove and also in the freezer, and I'm gonna show you how to do that and how we like to cook those up. So enjoy. I'll start with some grass-fed butter. You wanna make sure you're soaking your morels in some cold water. And then we've got our Cabela's brand um, vacuum sealer. We like to cut our mushrooms in half and uh, it helps get the bugs out of the middle of them. We don't use a binder, we just stick it uh, a little bit damp into the flour, do a light coating. You wanna put that into a pan of, uh, of that grass-fed butter I mentioned earlier. Uh, probably use a little more butter than that. Uh, we like to try and do this as healthy as possible with not a lot of butter, but we re recommend a little bit more than that. And you wanna make sure you do it at a pretty low heat, maybe like a three or so. Basically just gonna wanna crisp them up until they have a little crunch to them. If your heat is too low, the morels will get a little soggy. So if you need to, turn your temperature up a little bit to get that nice crunch to go along with that delicious morel flavor. I like to flip them over once or twice just to make sure they're evenly cooked. It's not like you're eating meat or anything, so it's not gonna, um, they're not gonna be raw or anything like that. This is a perfect crispy little bite. Uh, the middle is still a little bit soft, which is perfect. It's got a nice little crunch to it. It's not soggy, and it is a absolutely delicious mushroom. If you haven't tried some, go walk around in the woods in the springtime. Find yourself some morels. I do have some other videos on that. I will uh, tag those at the end. And then when I do vacuum seal these, uh, I've done it before to where the vacuum sealer kind of squishes them. Morels are very fragile. You want to just start the vacuum sealer and then seal it up right after that. So you're getting about half the oxygen out of the bag, still leaving a little bit in there. Uh, just to not crush the mushrooms, but uh, it is sealed completely to make it so that they are very easily stored. I like to double seal my bags because I don't trust them. One out of every 10 doesn't seal correctly for whatever reason, and you end up with a uh, bag with air in it, and it just doesn't keep your food very fresh. Put it anywhere you want in your freezer. So I'm gonna save these personally until around the fall time where I really get that mushroom craving because there's nothing for sale out there and uh, it's gonna taste just as good as when I picked them. Enjoy. Yeah. 